Government has shut down 49 illegal gas filling plants out of 138 that are licensed. Energy CS David Churcher announced the closures during separate appearances before the National Assembly Departmental Committee on Energy and the Senate Standing Committee on Energy on the liquefied petroleum gas explosion incident. CS Churcher pledged to address compensation concerns voiced by victims of the Embakasi gas explosion with members members of the Senate committee investigating the incident, urging him to expedite the process. Ben Kirui has more details. In the aftermath of the devastating LPG explosion in Mbakasi's Mradi area earlier this month, both the National Assembly's Departmental Committee on Energy and the Senate Standing Committee on Energy summoned Energy Cabinet Secretary Davis Chirchir, Principal Secretary of the State Department of Petroleum Mohamed Liban, and EPRA Director General Daniel Kiptoa to shed light on various aspects, including the rationale behind locating the LPG facility near human settlements. The facility was licensed, and I'm going to quote how... At the High Court, it emerged that there were three valid licenses issued by EPRA, applied for on April 8th, April 21st, May 2nd, and October 12th, 2023. The premise where the incident happened in Miradi and Mbakasi, one was not licensed, Two, it was not a filling plant. It was operating, as Waziri had said, as a garage by day. And in the dead of the night, uh, trucks were driving in and being refilled. Concerns regarding compensation for victims were raised by legislators, questioning why the affected individuals were left to bear the burden of an avoidable incident. People have lost properties. People have lost life. And EPLA has a, a responsibility. Uh, on corporate social responsibility. I didn't hear you mention anything of that nature. The PS has expressed his message of condolences to the families. Uh, Bonaziri, what have you done for the human face? What we've done is to put a budget within the National Disaster Committee Unit in the office of the Deputy President, and we have nominated officials from every ministry uh, to sit in that committee to follow up with this kind of incidents so that we don't have piece of budget sitting in every ministry to deal with national disaster because this was a disaster. The national disaster uh, management uh, fund, whatever it is you, you spoke about, that is domiciled in the office of the deputy president. Being a national office, uh, it is expected that when there is a disaster, they are the ones to go to the people. What I have heard you say here is that uh, the people of Mbakasi are the ones to look for what you call the point of call in this particular office. Uh, is it really fair, Waziri? Because when there are floods in Northeastern, I don't see the people from Northeastern coming to the Deputy President's office to look for support. I see the government going to the people. Why is it different for the people of Nairobi? They were also tasked with providing details on the explosion's cause, the unlicensed LPG entity involved, measures against illegal operations, legal actions against culprits, and long-term solutions. You know the surrounding, you know the environment. Why would you wait for this to happen? With the support of this Honorable House seeking to increase our resources, both from a financial standpoint and also from a human resource standpoint, so that then we can be able to conduct uh, the surveillance. In the report presented by the Cabinet Secretary, the enforcement meant to tackle illegal gas plants poses a significant challenge for the Energy and Petroleum Regulations Authority, EPRA, which cites resource limitations. Ben Kirui, Citizen TV, from Parliament Buildings, Nairobi. President